Hey guys, Laura here from What Laura Likes. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, welcome. Today we are gonna be talking about the vasectomy reversal that Ryan had back in October 6, 2020. And I'm gonna be interviewing him, so here he is. And um, I wanted to do this video because originally I talked about why we got the reversal with a huge mistake of getting a vasectomy in the first place, but we hadn't gone through it yet. And now it's been a year and a half and no, God has not blessed us with a child yet, but it was still, in our opinion, very worth it to go through the reversal. And so I wanted to give you some of those details that I know some of you have actually asked me about over the past year and a half. And hopefully this is an encouragement for men to, one, not make the mistake that we did, but two, if you have had a vasectomy, to understand that reversal is a very real option and, um, and a beautiful one. So Ryan, just starting off, <laughs> I can't even, I can't even, um, are you glad today that you had the reversal? Well, first of all, Laura, thank you for having me on your show. <laughs> um, you're welcome. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question? Okay. So today, are you glad that you had the reversal done? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. You can tell the this people. This seems like a one word, uh, answer. Okay. Yes, I am. Okay, so he's glad. So let's move on. Okay. Do <laughs> you want me? To... Oh. No, it's fine. That's fine. Okay. Um, why don't you talk a bit about the procedure, <clears throat> but not the gory details? Let's just look. generally. Don't scare men, but just, you know, talk about, like, what it was like to get the re reversal. Well, it's, um, I think it's a, just a little bit more painful than getting it done. Okay. All right. And the recovery is just a little bit longer and you're a bit, little bit more sore than you would be getting it snipped in the first place. Okay. okay. Getting it put back together is a little bit more, but if you, you know, already have had one, you already know it's not even that big of a deal. Um, <clears throat> so just a little bit more to get right with God yeah. really is nothing at all. You said you called it like getting right with God. Like... How did you feel when you first got the vasectomy and we weren't in the same place with our faith? But, you know, I know you've talked a little bit about that. So let's go like into like a little bit of how you felt when you first got the vasectomy and maybe a little bit of justifications or whatever you feel he needs to share. But then how do you feel now having it reversed? Okay. So long story. Try to shorten it up here. Okay. All right. Yeah, take your time. What do you mean? Uh, the reasons for getting it in the first place uh, for me, was completely selfish, okay. is what it was. I was like, I don't want to have any more kids. Done. Mm -hmm. Made my decision. I want to be able to have sex without any other consequences all the time, whenever I want. Done. That was that was it. It was okay. completely selfish. It was worldly, mm -hmm. and uh, very much influenced by um, other people that I worked with that had had it done. Yeah. And uh, they convinced me, and I was just like, okay, that's what I want to do. It sounds easy. Let's do it. Yeah. And then we don't have to worry about kids. I don't want to have any more kids. I want them to be out of the house by the time I'm whatever age. And, you know, I don't want to have to keep feeding more mouths. It, it was completely mm. selfish. Okay. Um, I had no idea how the church felt about it. I yeah. had no idea if it was even a church teaching. And even in, at the time, I'm not even sure if I would have cared. I probably would have just done what a lot of people do. It's like, well, that's not my Catholicism. Yeah. Um, yeah, we were picking and choosing at that point. So, um, but yeah, you know, just we're, and, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, it was, it was, it was completely selfish reasons. This is why I did it. Okay. So. Okay, so before, I mean, I could I could add some comments to that so because... just follow up with more questions. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, I could add more comments to that, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep having Ryan talk. But I, from my point of view, it was not completely selfish because we had some complications with our pregnancies and there were other factors that were involved. Otherwise, yeah, I would have put up a bigger fight. I, that's um, true. I forgot about that. I always forget about that because I think the other reasons at the time my selfish reasons were my bigger priority reasons. Okay. Cuz I, I was kind truly of... down at the bottom of my heart. I would have taken the chances had I known had I just been not stupid. Um 
But, uh, yeah, it was completely driven by the world. Okay. Yeah, because it was, like, health and finance were kind of the bigger thing, like, on my on my heart. But still, it was wrong, like I said in the other video. So, obviously, you've had the reversal. So, what has changed between now and the Well, what, ch- what brought me to wanting to have it reversed? Yeah. Um, Other than prayer, because I pray to St. Joseph. I'm not joking. Right. Um, I don't remember how many years went by. Uh, too many, to say the least. I mean, I think it was seven years before it finally got reversed. It was reversed. six. Six years mm-hmm. before it finally got reversed. Um, and it was uh, kind of a slow-going nag uh, that uh, n- was always at the back of my mind, was always kind of weighing at my heart. It, a- after it was all said and done, and just got to do with do whatever I w- wanted and when I wanted with uh, you and me, <laughs> um, it, uh, it, it, you know, after all that, it's like being in a candy store and you get to try all the candy you want. And sooner or later, it's like all the candy is just the same. It's just candy, uh-huh. you know. And it's like I don't need to keep trying all the candy I want. You know, it's, it, you're just all it was. All it was was just trying to please myself. Yeah. And um, you know, and then you start to kind of think about, you know, what is what is it that I really just did? Um. And it's always kind of weighing and weighing and your heart a little bit. Subconsciously, it's just there. But, you know, I, I, I suppressed it. I ignored it as long as I could. But through your prayer and through just being, uh, trying to uh, be closer, to uh, be a better Catholic and know my faith better. Um, and that kind of opening up the doorways for me to really self-reflect on decisions that I've made. Uh, it just started to get something that was heavier and heavier and heavier on my heart. Mm. And, um, I think it was sometime after we, you know, got back into the military after that short period out yeah, and, uh, started the, it really started to weigh me down, you know, it really started to weigh me down a little bit was that, um, I cut us off from, being able to bring more joy and life into the world. And I didn't do it because it was something that was pleasing or holy or um, even right. It was just, I did it for me. And that was stupid and selfish. So I remember like I was praying and I was telling Ryan, you know, I could really want our child. I'm really heartbroken, as I've said in another video, you know, about us not being able to have more children, I just, I went to confession and just was like, oh my gosh, what did we do? He wasn't there yet, but over the course of like about a year and a half of like lots of prayer and talking with him and crying a lot, he's like, I'm just so tired of you crying. And I was like, but, but you know, like I want more children and like we can't and it's, it's heartbreaking. And, and so I think like you were saying, it was kind of nagging at you and then you finally. Well, I forgot about that. I forgot about all the conversations that we had. Um, and, uh, that also was something that also started to weigh heavily on me and affect me. Um, and I don't remember any aha moment or anything like that. It was just like, you know, enough's enough, enough. Stop pretending that, um, that you didn't do wrong. Hmm. Stop pretending that you didn't just sterilize yourself and, uh, cut off. Um, God's design uh, because that's really all it was it was just you know uh, us guys we'll lie to each we'll lie to ourselves to tell ourselves that we're we're doing good and that we're doing it for right reasons mm-hmm. and so it's just I it just stop lying to yourself Ryan is all I was just telling myself and so it just got to a point where it's like okay um, I started looking into it on my own what it would take and stuff like that you know, is it even possible uh, after so long and this and that? And I just finally just said, yeah, okay, let's, we're going to do it. Because it was like, stop being scared it was the other thing. It's like, yeah, having an inner child is always scary no matter what. And, and it was, that was the other thing. It was like, stop being such a baby and stop being scared 
you, you've had two kids. They're not that, they're not that hard. Yeah. You know, you can have another one. It's like, you always talk about wanting to have like eight kids and we know some families have eight kids. And yeah, I tell you, I, I don't, I don't want to have that many, but if that's the way it's gotta be, <laughs> Well, I don't think, but, based on my age and just, so far, probably not going to end up with eight kids. Just, but you know, sitting in their house for a few minutes, I'm just like, gosh, there's a lot going on around here. <laughs> it's just shock. But yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, so it just got to a point where it's like, as a, I, have, I had to self-reflect, like, okay, am I being a man right now? Am I being a husband? Mm-hmm. Am I being courageous? Am I being brave? Am I being upstanding and true? Uh, not just to you, but also to uh, God's intentions, mm-hmm. and the answer was no. Yeah. So it was okay. You know, cowboy up. Stop being such a little baby. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna keep language clean for your channel. Thank you. Um, and uh, and and be a freaking man. Yeah. This is not. Yeah. This is not it. Ster- to sterilizing myself was just like. I was like, I it always kind of felt like something was missing a little bit. And it was because I cut, I cut off a piece of my manhood from myself. Yeah. And I thought it was more manly just to be able to have sex whenever I wanted without consequences. Mm-hmm. And this is, couldn't be further from the truth. Yeah. And uh, so as time went on, it was just that became more and more of a reality. It was just like, okay, it's time for this to be put back together. The other thing I wanted to share was that as a wife, he knew I wanted him to get the reversal, but because there was like, for us, there was like, I guess because of an unknown, I wouldn't say this is really an issue at all, but I was worried something might happen to him physically from getting the reversal because it's such a delicate area. And so I was like, I can't make you or guilt you into having this really intimate surgery It had to be him. And that's why I turned to St. Joseph, who's his patron saint. And it took about four months from ending the novena to Ryan being in the car the weekend before he left for Korea saying, I'm going to get the reversal. And we were on the way to church. And I was like, I know you are because I prayed to St. Joseph. And that is what, that's what those kind of prayers that have that much confidence behind them do. Yeah, I think you hey. laughed at me and said that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I know. Uh, fortunately, it took about a year and a half later to finally Absolutely get it get done. There. After it was all said and done, and after the three-day laying on my on my backside, just recovering and being a little baby about it, you know? Yeah. And for good reason. Yeah. You know, because I had a tube coming down my throat. I remember, scrum. yes. Um, <clears throat> uh... Once everything was back to normal and everything's working properly and all that stuff. Oh, sorry, I'm shaking your table. Yeah. Uh, everything's working properly and all that stuff. Um, it just, and then when we came together um, for the first time, it was just like a whole renewing experience. Yeah. It wasn't like before when I had it, it snipped and then I recover and we come together it was completely. It was completely different from that. That was just yeah. um, physically pleasuring only. Yeah, I mean, we still saw it as bonding. No, but of course, I mean, of course, of course. Yeah, but this was like, on a different level. Yeah. It, not only was it, you know, the physical pleasuring was there, of course, but the spiritual bonding between us was yeah. like tenfold. Yeah. Uh, more noticeable than it had been before. And it was it was like something was just missing between us uh, intimately, mm-hmm. and it was just like renewed and put back. And I had no idea that was even gone. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Kind of like when you uh, take something that you enjoy out of your life, and you completely forget what it's even like. Yeah. And then you put it back in, and you're like, "Oh man, I forgot how good chocolate is," or something like that. I don't know, yeah. whatever you want. But, and that's what it was like. Yeah. Um, so it was like that thing that was missing. I couldn't tell what it was for so long. Mm-hmm. And then finally just kicking myself in the ass and saying, you know, stop being such a little baby and go get it done. Yeah. You're a man, man up. And I go and I, I reinsert that into my life. And all yeah. of a sudden it's like all this stuff in our marriage, in, in the intimacy part of our marriage that was missing. I had no freaking idea. It was gone. Yeah. And when it, it was just when it was put back in there it was just it was like you know 
um, like being remarried again, you know, and, and stuff like that. So, and I felt completely whole. I felt like I just, I just fulfilled a role as a man, um, after, after intimacy. Yeah. Whereas before it was just, I just fulfilled myself. Mm. Yeah. You know? And I think for me, it was like, because we had used birth control in the past. And so the only time we had truly been open to life is when we were like, oh, we want to have a baby. And each kid took about three months to conceive. And so that those three months were like the only times we were truly like living like the true Catholic marriage. And so when you got it reversed and we both understood the church teaching fully, for me, it was just like, this is like the best ever. Yeah. Because we had finally, we were finally open to life in the way that the church teaches in her wisdom and in rightly order with God. And that like theology of the body explains, you know, it's not just you and your spouse having a good time. Like God is involved in our intimacy. He's involved in all aspects of our marriage, including in the bedroom and, and getting your head wrapped around that. I mean, it's weird at first, but it's like, it was just so prevalent because we had lived wrong before. And when, and we've gone through this huge change in order to live right with God. And for, for our marriage, it was huge. That, yeah, that was something else was getting right with, with the teachings of the church about, um, intimacy and, um, what do you call this? Um, and, and the, and the birth control and all that stuff getting, getting right. Like the moral teachings. Yeah. Getting right with the moral teachings. Yeah. Also was a big played a big role in that spiritual intimacy between you and me. Like you were just saying, because yeah. God's involved in that spiritual intimacy in, uh, in a marriage. Yeah. And so when I look back now at how I suppressed everything, mm-hmm. because I was just allowing myself to be convinced by the world and not be convinced by the church. Yeah. Like, it's like when you know that there's an answer, you know, in a book, mm-hmm. but you're choosing to let your eyes wander past it mm. and go to the next page. Okay. You know, it's like, I don't want to know. I'm yeah. just going to go. I know. Okay. I've lived that but way you for know, a long time. page 58, yeah. whatever, it's the answer's right there. Even yeah. though you're continuously going through this book and something seems like it's missing, uh-huh. but you don't want to go back to page 58. And look, even though you know it's there, the truth is right there. Because you have to it. submit, you have to be and, obedient. Right. I've learned now, and through a lot of other experiences in spiritual warfare, is that the devil counts on your weakness. He counts on your inability to want to do the hard thing. Mm-hmm. So he waits for that weak moment and he will just knock the legs out from the chair you're sitting on you know and um so for things like this it was like not even realizing that the devil was just trying to keep me from having a more holy life yeah by tempting me with the um the desires of the world yeah um and When you get close to having that more holy life, um, he tempts you even further. Oh, he tempts you even more and more and more because he doesn't want you to get anywhere close to that. Yeah. And it happens even when we're in prayer, especially me. Mm -hmm. My mind goes in places, just has nothing to do with God. and, and, And it's because he knows that when we pray, we are getting close to him. So he will infect us any way he possibly can to distract us and that's what that whole experience was with the vasectomy and the reversal was getting to i had to get to a place where i literally had to like you know you know big sarge talk myself up yeah stop being such a little you know baby a little baby well i didn't say baby i know and you know, I had to man up about it. Yeah. Because before I was just letting the devil say, ah, 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 hey, turn my head this way, but look at all this over mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. You know, and it completely distracts you. And he only does that whenever we get close to thinking about doing the right thing. Right. 
And we can't and tell. And then we get scared. Yeah. We get afraid. We're not really scared, though. That's the thing. And there's nothing to really be scared about, especially right. if you fully and earnestly submit yourself to trusting trusting Jesus and what happens with us. Yeah. So like you say, you're worried about what would happen down here or if something yeah. went wrong. Well, mm-hmm. I was worried about that too. But at the same time, I like as I was telling myself to constantly, to man up, yeah. it was just like, trust in Jesus. Yeah. Trust Christ. He's going to see you through this. If it doesn't work out, then, well, it never was meant to be. Or that's your punishment Yeah. for doing it in the first place. I'm just going to have to accept whatever comes from here. Yeah. Um, but, I was, but I wasn't going to allow myself to be scared. What I was trying to say is that you talking about Satan turning us towards the world and being like, but look at all the things you might lose. Because I think when people think about even becoming Catholic, they go to that place of like, I don't want to lose all this stuff. But what they don't understand is that on the other side, in right order with God, is so much more than you could ever expect. Yeah. And so like, I, we didn't expect our intimacy to go to the level it has. Mm. I just wanted you to fix yourself so we could have a baby. And yet, it's a year and a half later, we don't have a baby, but we have a much better intimacy with each other. Way better. And it's a fruit that had we, you know, we just would never have expected and known about. Yeah, and for any guys listening to this, that is uh, one of the larger benefits is the change in the intimacy. Mm -hmm. Because your wife now looks at you differently. Yeah. Um, cause I know you did. Yeah. I could tell, I could just tell without you even saying it. Your wife will look at you differently. She'll look at you more as a man, a complete whole man, a man that's, um, really willing to do anything. Yeah. Even just have a child willy nilly, yeah. you know? Yeah. And just, what that's idea. okay because <laughs> yeah. I'm the man and I'm going to make, and I'm going to take care of it. Yeah. And I'm going to make sure that everything's good and that we're set. And because that's my job, that's my ordered rule. Um, and then for you yourself, you're going to feel more like a man again. Yeah. You're not go- you're not going to feel like a little boy that's just trying to get his jollies off whenever he feels like it. Mm-hmm. I know that wasn't entirely how our, our intimate life was. No, it wasn't. No. I know that. It's just when I look back, mm-hmm. when I look back, that was one thing that I saw within myself. That's all. Yeah. I understand. And that bothered me. So, yeah. But now it's just, it's completely different. It's completely different. Well, as far as the, I was going to say this when we were talking a minute ago, okay. was the fear part. Yeah. You know, um, that will scare us with all the worldly stuff or try to tempt us. Well, either way, it's a temptation. Yeah. Um, and the financial thing. People often say, well, it's the finance thing. Yeah. I mean, we know like three families with like, seven plus kids yeah uh, well yeah now well now because i have that social media presence i know a lot of people with you know, like a lot of kids <laughs> yeah you know and, and like they don't they're surviving they're they're surviving <laughs> and they're not making a lot of money yeah some of them aren't no and one of them stay-at-home mom is she they're all stay-at-home moms. Yeah, they're all stay-at-home moms yeah. and you know regular blue collar jobs yeah working for you know a big box store or something they're not like going that. on fancy vacations yeah, or have on, new cars no. but they're making it and yeah. they have wonderful children yeah so if it's a financial thing then you're going to have to look at your finances especially man the men you guys need to look at your what your what is the issue with your finances is it because you're not going to have the goal of getting another car or keeping up with the lifestyle that you have and all the goodies that come with that financial lifestyle. Yeah. Are you really going to choose that over, you know, bringing more life and and, and potentially more holy Catholics into the world? Right. You're going to choose that over what God's design is. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what it comes down to. Okay. And I get it. It's scary. I'm why should I talk? We only have two. Yeah. I don't know. I just look at these other people. I'm like, if they can do it, if this guy can do it, yeah, I can freaking do it. Yeah. Though, yeah, I don't want to have kids running around screaming and, you know, sticky stuff in the in, in the carpets and, <laughs> you know, and and stuff like that. But I would rather be right with God and have that, yeah, than be wrong with God and have all of this. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. So does that. 
all right, so I come across this all the time in the military. Yeah. And um, it's uh, guys get vasectomies all the time. I know. Because it's free. Paid for. Yep. Okay. And each so one of sad. them, I mean, it's like a club. You want to be part of the club. Mm hmm. You know? And, you know, they all joke about, you know, what happens and stuff like that. And they, they talk about all the worldly stuff that's attractive to having it done. Uh huh. Um, but not a single one of them wants to really face what they're losing. Yeah. And so every time, because I was that way, because that was me. Okay. I was attracted to all the, all the attractive, I was attracted to all the, all the pleasures of having it done and no responsibility that would come from intimacy ever again. And it's just yeah. whenever, right? But then, uh, now I see myself in those other people's faces when they're all, we're all, you know, sitting around smoking and joking and, and, and uh, they're talking about, you know, going to go have it done. Uh-huh. And it's like, well, how many kids do you have? Well, I got one. Oh, so that's really sad. That's really sad. I was like, you sure you want to do it? And it's just like, yeah, I have to. And they, they bring up the finances. They bring up the medical possibility mm-hmm. of there being a problem. It seems like there's a lot of doctors out there t- telling women that you really shouldn't get pregnant again. Right. Well, we live in an abortion centered atheist culture. So, yeah. Um, and I don't know why I'm not them people. I can't, I don't, I can't look into their medical records and right. determine. So I'm not going to even judge, but it's like, okay, all right. I understand. And I'll tell them all. I, I understand. I had the same fears too, because both my children were premature. Right. And it seemed like there was a pattern with the second one. It was way earlier than a, the first one. Yeah, <laughs> beginning of a pattern here. Yeah. And after that whole experience with Neil and the NICU, it was pretty awful. Um, yeah. But, um, <clears throat> you know, and I'll try to connect with them on that way, but I never try to miss an opportunity to let them know how I felt once I had it put back. Yeah. Because I had no idea what I was missing from intimacy and stuff like that. It's not worth it at all to put yourself in a position to have to answer to god why you chose the world over his design and plan for you Mm -hmm. because you literally took his creation and you altered it for your your own needs and pleasures Mm -hmm. don't do it it's not worth it yeah and me being living proof and knowing how it feels to have it there and take and and then alter it myself and then put it right back. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, 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 I now know what it was I was missing. I didn't see it until it was put back. Yeah. So, um, don't be scared about having more children. And if you've had a vasectomy and you want to get it redone and you're thinking about getting it redone and you're scared about the procedure, don't be scared. Because you already had somebody in there in the first place, snipping mm-hmm. it away yeah. and carterizing it. It's you might as well have somebody go back in and put it back together. It's not that big of a deal. Okay. All right. It's just a little bit more bruising. It just takes a little bit longer to heal. Yeah. Okay. If you, most of us have all been kicked in the nuts before. Had a baseball or a basketball hit us in the in 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 the, the goo goo. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of like in that video, unprotected. It talks about how, like, I love everything about you but your fertility. And that's what birth control and sterilization does. It's like, I love everything about you but your fertility that God put there. And, um... Yeah, you know, and that's and that's so, something. Uh, I, when you came off of birth control, like, 100% and it never touched it again. Yeah. Like, totally different. Yeah, I mean, that's true. That's the other thing. Is like, that, I, I, even, I even looked at you differently. It was just, It's just an amazing... That's interesting. It's an amazing thing. Yeah. That we don't even know what is happening. Yeah. It's, ugh, don't use birth control. This stuff's terrible for you. Uh, and so is a vasectomy. Um, all right. So, Ryan, thank you so much for being here and talking about it and being open and honest about it because I really do hope that this kind of conversation, I feel like even if we never are blessed with more children, having our story out there for other people to hear and giving them these messages because we have such a unique perspective because we have done it all wrong and then try to try to write it and so i really appreciate you being here talking about it where can people find you 
They can go to the uh, search uh, bar there on YouTube and uh-huh. just type in Reclaiming the Sword. Yeah. And I think I'm probably just a couple of uh, scrolls Usually down. Usually you're on the front. So Ryan Usually has Usually own... on the front or just a couple scrolls down. It doesn't take long. Yeah. Or your website. Yeah. Uh, do I have it? Yeah, I think you I... You better have it on your website. I don't you know if be, I have it on my website. You better be uh, promoting me. I'm, I might be. I'm talking about it on my Instagram. Anyway, so Brian has a YouTube channel, for those of you who don't know, and it's just kind of getting off the ground still, but there's some really good content on there, so um, be sure you check it out. It'll be linked down below. Yeah, it's and... mostly dedicated to Catholic men and... Yeah. Spirit, our, our own spiritual battles. Yeah. Really. So, um, so that, you guys... Continue to know God, to know, love, and serve God. If you have questions for us, you can definitely email us. You can email me at whatlarelikeschannel at gmail.com or Ryan at Reclaiming the Sword 21. Reclaiming the Sword 21 at gmail. At gmail.com. And um, with that, we'll, we'll talk to you guys again soon. Bye. You have to say bye. You have to say bye. Goodbye. <laughs> bye.